Australia's major sporting codes going through a major transition when it comes to concussions and player welfare. Last week, the NRL introduced a mandatory 11-day stand-down period for any player to have suffered a concussion on the field. Yet past players are now speaking out, saying the codes aren't doing enough to support a player once their career has actually ended. Joining us live now is the NRL legend and Fox League commentator, Mark Spud Carroll. Look, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for making the effort. Before we start, I just wanted to say I'm so sorry to learn you have recently been diagnosed, as I understand it, with this degenerative brain disease, CTE. Despite all the publicity around this disease at the moment and in recent weeks and months, it still must have come as a huge shock to you. Yeah, Ash, uh, thanks very much for having me on this show. Um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, the reason why I went and got tested was after watching Mario Fennec's story, and it rattled me. Um, I had many confrontations with Mario, um, and, you know, I had many concussions in my career, but I never thought about it. Uh, so I just uh, got in touch with James Graham, who's a, a mate of mine, and I used to listen to him on this podcast called Head Noise, and as the podcast went on and on, episode, episode, I just kept ticking the box and going, this is me, this is me, this is me. So... I asked James for the number of Dr. Wiener mobs. Um, I then had a PET scan and I remember sitting at the gym and about to start work and she's rung and said, look, the uh, MRI is good. And I went, how good is this? I've ticked the box. And then she stopped. I said, you're there, Doc. And she goes, look, I'm really sorry, Mark, but the PET scans come up with, um, you know, evidence of uh, CTE. And I didn't realise until... I thought you had to pass away or to, to find out you had it. But at least now the... A PET scan does, it actually helps. Um, that's why I'm asking the NRL, and I've asked on multiple platforms, and I'm still filthy with the NRL, because I gave my heart and soul, and I'll do it again tomorrow. I'm not here for money. I'm not after any compensation. I've got no class action. All I want to do is help the era that I played, and also the era before me and the era before. They were my heroes. They were my heroes, but they're also heroes to everyone out there. We've just lost the great John Sattler. He was a hero to everyone. He wanted to be as tough as him. And all I want to do is the NRL to cover the bill, which is $900 for a PET scan, just to tick the box that you haven't got anything. But the killer is Medicare don't cover it. We're not covered by any health fund. You can have the highest health fund, you are not covered. So I'm just saying to the uh, NRL, mate, it's your time to hit, do a hit up and take on the responsibility of looking after fellow players. And it's, you know, it's also, you know, it's, it's, you've just got to, I don't know, we, we made the NRL. It used to be the ARL, now it's the NRL. And without players like the ones before me, who were my heroes, running from the back fence, Jeff Robinson. I wanted to be like Ray Price, in perpetual motion. Terry Randall, I wanted to hit as hard as he did. And I'm sure kids these days look up to players now. You know, the NRL, please step forward and do what you should do. But we have a, a clip here that I want to show our viewers. It's you clashing with Paul Harrigan in the 90s, mid-90s sometime. It must make you feel ill watching that now with the benefit of hindsight. Yeah, Ash, well, first I just want to apologise for my uh, passion. I'm, mate, this hurts me. It really does. But you think of a collision like that, myself and the Chief, we called a... Um, you know, it's a rivalry that people still... It's a legacy. People still talk. You can't hit like these days. And... The background of myself and the Chief that, you know, we have these massive, uh, you know, smash-ups in the middle, as I like to call them. But at the end of the day, we look at each other in the eye and give us a handshake. That's how we've been brought up. Um, but a lot of people don't understand. Uh, I had a father who never played rugby league, but he, to me, I'd think he knew everything. And my dad always said, never show your, never show your hurt, son. Always get up. And in an instance like this video now, I was buzzing, right? Unfortunately, the Chief, I knocked him out, but... You know, it could have been me, and it was just part of our game back then. We never went off. You know, we used to get concussed. The trainer, I never, ever went off with a trainer. I never went off on a stretcher. And the signature thing for us, we used to yell to the trainer, smelling salts, smelling salts, which happens in boxing as well, and then you go again. You know, it's just, I look back now, yeah, wow. Yeah, you know, since that movie Concussion, now they know so much more about it. Um, I heard also a thing over in... Boston University. See, America is so far ahead of us. So they've actually got their own centre on the university to, to uh, test CTE. They had former players. Sure, it's American sport grid on. They had 376 players tested. 
And Ash, 345 had symptoms of CTE. That's 91%. And we don't wear helmets. We wear a mouth guard and grab your chest and, and grow a heart. Pat, it seems absolutely nonsensical. And look, please don't apologise for expressing your passion. I think we're all really um, breaking our hearts for you at the moment, talking about all of this after such a recent diagnosis. It is a tricky question, but with the medical focus on this now, and, and I understand it's a, still a pretty new thing, as you point to here in Australia in particular, overseas, are there any breakthroughs coming? Is there any sort of treatment? What, what do you now do with this diagnosis? Well, I've, and actually, I'm on some medication, which is, I think, you know, for brain health. Um, you know, I feel that when I walk, I rattle. I have got any tablets going to me, but if it's going to help me. Uh, the, the most scariest thing out there is that I've been living in silence for at least probably three to four years, under the guard, never let the guard down. People would come to my gym and say, how are you feeling? Man, I was feeling like crap, but I'd always say, I'm OK. Um, but uh, Jessica Halloran, who they did the story for the Australian... Uh, I've never told anything. And some of the things I told her were, it was emotional. I cried when I was doing this interview and I was more scared and worried that when my family, my beautiful wife and my two great kids would read this, that I had, you know, visions in my sleep that I, um, I wanted to end it. Uh, I look back now, what am I doing? But, you know, I had this one tree, which I still drive past every day. There's a corner road on uh, Monaville Road, and I said, if there's a truck, I'm taking it on. And thank God it was a car. So I just know there's so many people, not in rugby league or, or sport, in general, in life, we're hiding in silence. And I'm even calling out the, uh, the Prime Minister, Albanese. Mate, I want to get together and have a chat to him because what we need to do, we need to pass that any person in Australia needs to be able to go and get a PET scan. It's the closest we can have to CTE and then work on it. But you've got to... Yeah, a lot of these people haven't got money. $900 is a lot of money, OK? Get it passed by Medicare and just tick the box. Mine came back with a massive cross, but then you take it on. But as I said, I've lost a couple of people due to suicide. Um, the great, you know, Paul Green passed away. He was a little halfback. There had to be demons in his head going on and on and on because you just think, go and take your life the next day. It's about planning and I feel sorry for that, mate. mate I, I tell you, well, I've had squirrels in my head as well and thank God the ones that I had on the good side uh, didn't cause me to take my life. So please, um, I'm, I'm pleading to the NRL to step forward and take the next hit up in rugby league terms. But also, I'm, I'm calling out the government. You know, Albanese, mad South man, seriously. It's called about mental health. We've got to start somewhere. And Spud, look, I think you're right. There obviously needs to be more help for people getting that diagnosis after the fact. But what about what needs to happen before it happens? What needs to change to stop other guys facing the same sort of diagnosis down the track? And more broadly for the sport, I mean, I can tell you, as a parent listening to, to you speak today, it, it makes you think twice about letting your child get involved in a sport like this can, that can have such devastating outcomes. What needs to change to make this safer for players? Well, especially when you talk about kids, Ash. Um, yeah, when I had my... Uh, I've got a boy, Joshua, and I've got a beautiful daughter, Indiana. And when you're a you know, rugby league player and you just think you're invincible, and I thought, no, I'd love to see Josh be the next Carol. And he went out the field and he just wasn't interested. And I decided, look, seriously, in, in deep down, in our game, we've got so much passionate supporters. Without the passionate supporters, they don't pay our wage. They ain't come through those gates. And I've, no doubt I've annoyed a few people. Um, and I can imagine if Josh was out there, go and fix that Carol kid. I don't like his dad. It only takes one hit, push him in the ground, break his neck, and I'm pushing him around the bloody chair, a wheelchair. I wouldn't let my kids play. I really wouldn't. They need to change the rules for young kids. Um, it should be wait for age. Some of these kids are up against, you know, I'm not being racist, the Samoans and all these... They're just beautiful people, right? But unfortunately for we Australians, they love their mum and dad's food. They don't leave the table before eating a whole lot. And they're just big people. Some of the guys in our, in our um, NRL at the moment, they're massive humans. But they're, they're the most beautiful soul people. When they hit people, they, they say sorry. But I feel for kids coming through. Um, you know, when you're 13, 14, 15, man, you're, you're, your body's like bloody chalk. It can break so away. And 
you know, the vision we're watching here, you know, you've got to teach kids if they were playing the tackle correct, all these knockouts, which I've seen so many times, in tackling terms, they're getting their head in the wrong position. When it's the right shoulder tackle, you put your head to the left. And the same with the opposite. But I look at someone like Carlin Ponger at the moment. That poor bugger. Mate, I feel sorry for him, mate, because I've been there, but we didn't have the opportunity to come off the field. Now they're looked after, and I just feel, Carlin, mate, life's too more important um, than rugby league. And I, I wouldn't like to see him going down the path I'm taking on. And I, I really mean this. I'm taking the ball on. Um, I've said to uh, Dr. Rowena Mobbs that I'll, I would love to be a guinea pig on any experiment. Um, so hopefully one day we can find a better and more 100% rule that you've got CTE and, and ways of fixing, not until I pass away and they open me up. Spud Carroll, look, good on you for sharing your experiences. I realise that's not an easy thing to do when you're talking about something that is so personal and your own health condition. And um, look, we really appreciate you giving your insights into what is a huge issue at the moment for, for various sporting codes. And, and look, just really appreciate you taking the time to, to make the effort to speak with us. Thanks again. Yeah, I'd just like to finish off, Ash, saying to anyone out there living in silence, please come out. Um, don't go hiding. Go and see a doctor. Um, and go and get some treatment and just tick the box, as I said. Um, but uh, just be strong and come out. It's fun. Thank you.